that I was hoping you'd have. I gave you a problem right at the end. And if you remember, what we're looking at here is how to find the forces in each of the members. Before, we've only looked at any forces at the reactions themselves, the support reactions at the wall. Each of these things need to hang on to a wall somehow. And I gave you a slightly different problem to work on Friday, if I remember. Something like that, right? Without all the details in. Who did it? Who gets the extra credit points for the day? Two days was not enough? <laughs> Evidently not. Two days was not enough. All right. We'll, we'll run through this real quick because, oh wait, there was a cross member here as well. Because uh, you'll be duly embarrassed at how easy it is to run through this problem. And then there's some obvious design changes that can be made once you have done the problem. All right, so we, we well, welcome to everybody. Come in whenever you dang well feel like it. So we had that, and then this point C was midway for each direction. So, so that's actually all we need, and this was two kilonewtons there. So that's the problem you were given. Alan, did you watch the video and do that problem? <laughs> okay, you have to. All right. So let's remember what we're doing here is uh, what was called the method of joints, wherein we take any one of the connection points, take any one of the connection points, and figure out the forces on that connection point. For instance, let's look at point C. Remember the nature of all of the members in these simple trusses that we're looking at? What did I say was the deal with each one of the members in a simple truss? They're all two force members, which means the forces in them and thus the forces they exert on the pin, which is what we're looking at here, are aligned with the, uh, the members themselves. If it's a curved member, then the forces are aligned with the two connection points. It doesn't matter what the member is doing in between. So we have three members that come in here. Thus, we're expecting three forces. So there'd be one kind of like that, one kind of like that, and one kind of like that. you make any conclusions about any of those forces? Any, anything? Uh, maybe these ones should be equal and opposite since they're collinear, since those two members are also collinear. That would make sense. Can we tell uh, anything about are they tension, are they compression, uh, or even anything else? Let's see, it would seem just because of this thing, it's going to pull down there, it, the two are going to pull on the two points, so that seems reasonable to do that. We'll label that uh, AC and this one CD, and this one CB. What about CB? Alan, you always see this kind of stuff. What about CB? This is where I saw my moment from. What? It's like it's like actually a pivot point. No, this this force CB. All the force. Yeah. Generally, as we're setting this up, we, we spend a little bit of time trying to think about where should the arrowhead go. We know the inclination of it. 
it's got to go along that member. If we can figure out where the error hood goes, it just makes the math uh, maybe a little bit simpler because we avoid minus signs. But don't spend much time on this. If you're not sure, then just guess and keep going. If you guess wrong, you get a minus sign in the answer. No big deal. Now I say this. What, Dana? Now, now remember the for the simple trusses. Since they're two force members, we're not taking into account the weight of any of the trusses. So you can't think that this joint would fall. It won't. Not not in simple truss world, because there's no weight pulling the members down themselves. So. Um, you can't think about what the structure itself would do, only how it responds to the load. Don't you want a force, if there are forces coming out of it, don't you want one going into it so that it doesn't... No. These two forces, appears they should equal, cancel each other. What's going to cancel that force? What if I did this with my axes? What if I laid them right along here and I could do that? What's available to cancel this at this force? Nothing. There's no transverse component. It may have a little bit of component in that direction, but we can take care of that with the relative sizes of those two. But there's going to be some component perpendicular to this line that has no other component in the problem to cancel that. Which means, what must be true about this force? It's a zero force member. Doesn't matter where it goes, just by observation of that joint C, it's got to be a zero force member because there's no way we can cancel any transverse component if, uh, if I've labeled those. There's no way we can cancel the Y component because we have no other Y component in that, anywhere in that joint. So that's a zero force member. As a designer then, you could say Leave it out. If it's not supporting any weight, leave it out. Now, remember, in a real life, yeah, that joint would fall in there. But these are massless uh, members that I got from Ace Harbor down the down the pipe. There. So we can leave that member out. What else? Well, now we go to the other joints, and we can figure out some different pieces of each of them. And maybe, I, well, we'll just do the answers because we've got other stuff to get on to. Uh, well, you can, you can tell by inspection what's going to be true about these members. Tension or compression? Tension. There's no way these could be in compression. So we can make another design decision. We've eliminated one member. We're trying to support that lower member in that weight. If this is only going to be in tension, let's replace it with a cable. Could be a lot cheaper to do that. Um, what about this member? Well, let's see. We know this is in tension, so let's look at, at uh, A. Actually, I kind of drew it bad. The, the whole thing has to be in one point there. So here's A. We know that going down to D must be in tension. So we'll draw it about like that. That's AC. Well, we can call it AD now. We're done with point C, taking it out.
what about this member then? It's got to do something along the line for somewhere in that direction. And what about the support? <laughs> Well, it's, we typically break those into orthogonal components. We might as well call that uh, AX, call this AY, and this one is AB. Just to stick to the system we've got. Is that no longer then a two-force member? Yeah, they're just components, so we, we could put those in, but then aren't there three forces there? Is this no longer a three-force member? Trick question. Remember, this is a free body diagram of the point, not the members. The members are two-force members, but the joints are not. The joints can have however many forces there are in them. This one happens to have well, four if we use our components on A. All right, so if you, if you do this one, that member, you should come up with, with, make sure I got the list right, yep. This also turns out to be a zero force member. It's not obvious from the little picture, but when you go to the solution, after you've got that, you would get that that's a zero force member. And then you can finish the rest of A. Which means we don't need this piece either. So we can just attach the cable right to the wall. And we still need, at least for our solutions, a roller there. Now, remember, this piece is massless, so it's not going to just slide down, not, not in our magic world. And that's a lot simpler piece. Took out the two zero force members we didn't need, put in the cable for the piece that's in tension, we have a much simpler design. So watch for zero force members and uh, take them out. If the design asks for it, watch for members only in tension. We can simplify some things. Yep? Even though the beam itself is massless, can you still do that? Because you have the weight or the force on the other end of it that's not massless. Sure. Look at that uh, free body diagram. We've got a load there from this. What else? Tension from the cable. What else? We've got this support, and what's that going to be? That's that's just a normal force from the wall, is all that's going to be. Um, and since that goes this way, it better go that way. Could that result in equilibrium? Yeah, it could. So, our our rational, real-world sense says this isn't going to work. But remember, we're, we're looking at extremely conservative solutions, so we're not looking at the mass of the uh, objects that perfectly, um, perfectly uh, rotatable pin hinges and all those kind of things. The, it's, it's always been the case that we have just a magic world in here. All right, so watch for those special conditions when they come about. All right, the second method is called the method of sections. In a general sense, when you need only a few of the forces in members, you might want to consider the method of sections. 
for example, we have this general truss shape we were working with on uh, Friday. Load there, load there, and it was pinned there, and uh, we had a roller, we had a roller there. So whatever direction they went, we had something like that. And we stepped through the method of joints and found out the force in every single member. It could be, however, that you only need the force in a few members. You don't need the force in all of the members. For whatever reason, if you're working as a civil engineer and you're concerned about one part of a bridge because there's maybe more rust there than another part, so you want to analyze that part alone, and not the entire structure. Look at these bridges, it's, there could be hundreds of, of these members in there. Say you only need to look at the force in that member. If we use method of sections, what we do is imagine a cut through there. And I could take either side. Let me take the left side just for the sake of argument. Looks something like that. And now we've got this cut through there. There was a point. That was a point. Anywhere we make this imaginary cut, we have to replace the force that that member supplied for it. So we've uh, still got these loads, and we cut through this member. We cut through this one, and we cut through this one. Those members each supply support and equilibrium to this remaining section. Should this section also be in equilibrium? Everything in this class is in equilibrium. Every joint, every member, every section, every subsection must be in equilibrium. So this piece must also be in equilibrium. We figured we'd need a little up force there just to take a pre-guess at it and make things a little simpler. Um, we have some left going force. We need some right going force. Who knows if it's both of those. Might as well just make a guess. Just go ahead and guess uh, tension. If we're wrong, we'll get a minus sign. And now we can just solve that piece. We didn't need to solve the reactions. If I took the other half, I would need the reactions. So I save a little bit of trouble just by going to this half and not needing the reactions then. I don't need the reactions. I don't have to solve for them. I can use just these inputs and I can figure out what those loads are. And you should, if you did that, get uh, exactly what we got before. So we don't need to do that one. Let's do another one. Makes it a little more obvious why we want the method of sections instead of the method of joints. So here's a new one. As usual, attached to the side of some wall with a, a pin hinge and a roller hinge, a pin joint, a subordinate roller joint. And then, just to save some trouble, I'll draw the members as simple lines. some kind of crane boom. Five of those. Five of those squares. One, two, three, four, five. And then a little piece like that from which hangs my mother-in-law. Just kidding, man. I have to say that. The lawyer said I have to put that in every time. All right, so we have some 
some uh, gigantic boom thing hanging out here. Maybe, maybe uh, could even be on the space station, I guess. And each side of this square, these squares, is one meter. We also need some cross members in there. Remember, squares are not stable. Triangles are. So we'll put in those cross members like that just for aesthetic beauty. Well, it needs some support, but put them all in the same direction for aesthetics. Label each piece. Uh, I've decided just to use the alphabet in order. But, you know, if you like the Cyrillic alphabet or Arabic or something, you go ahead and do something else entirely. side, because both sides must be in equilibrium. This is an imaginary cut, not a real one. Which side makes more sense to use now to solve for the force in CJ? Makes more sense to use the right side because you have an input force. You need something like that just to be able to solve the problem. We don't need the joints, we don't need the members. Uh, if you want to, you can sketch them in just for reference. D and J. And then we're looking for that force in CJ. Remember, any member you cut through with this imaginary cut of sections, you must put in a force in the right direction to replace that member now that it's been cut out, at least cut out in our imaginations. And don't forget to put any load in. Even if it's a reaction, you need to put it in if there is one on that section. And now you can solve that section. by the nature of the thing, I think we're going to have forces in that direction. We can go ahead and put those in. And label them. Uh, let's see. This would be CD. CJ remembers the one we're looking for. And uh, IJ is this other one. 
All right, so let's play a little game here, a little game show. How many equations do you need to solve this problem? And then you stand, you hit the buzzer and stand up and say, I can solve that in three equations. And somebody else says, I think I can do it in two. And then we, we have the contestant come down. And if you get it right, you win that Chevy Nova. 1972 Chevy Nova. Nova. How many equations do you need? Well, there's three unknowns. So somebody, at least three, we agree on that. Somebody think they could do it with two. Willing to put some money on it. Nobody says two. Anybody say one? I'm thinking one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. How would you do it? I don't exactly how to do it yet, but I know that it's got to be just one. Why? Just because of <laughs> the way I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't know, you know. It's just it's intuition. One question. Draw a line from. The Notice the way this is the one we're looking for. It's the only one with an unknown vertical component. So the only equation we need is to sum the forces in the y direction. If y is our typical direction of up and down. And with that alone, you, sh you can solve CJ. Is that true? What do you mean? You don't. <laughs> Nothing at all. What does it mean? What part of it? Well, all right, let's do it. Imagine it's still there. I just needed some space. All right, some of the forces in the y direction. We've got 100 kilonewtons down. And we've got CJ going up, but only its vertical component. Do we know that angle? It's 45 degrees, isn't that convenient? There you go. I accept your forthcoming apology. <laughs> I know, it's forthcoming. Oh, uh, it's not, no. no. All right, down to the principles. On. <laughs> That's sufficient to do it? Okay. Uh, notice that the length of the thing, other than the one meter that gave us the 45 degrees, doesn't matter. This doesn't really matter which one of those diagonal pieces we looked at. All of them are going to have the same uh, force in them. Is that right? Because there's nothing in here that has to do with the position along this beam where we are. All of the diagonal pieces have that same force in them. Okay. Now, one for you. I've been working hard. We have documentation of that. So here's one for you. Alright. Top piece of equal length. And it comes down. square there that's divided into rectangles and those pieces are all equal. We'll just call them L. So that's L, that's L, and up the sides then is 2L. Huh? 
And then we have two little parts there. Should I change that letter, Ellen? With that, with that, are you blushing? All right, and there's, there's some kind of train bridge or something with our usual business. Except we have some squares there, so we want triangles. So we put in a nice, uh, nice piece like that, evenly placed right in the middle, even if it doesn't quite look like it. And then we have three loads. Generically, some function of F. So label A, B, C, D, E. I don't want to use F. I've already got it in there. H, J, K. a second or two to get that drawing down. Sounds like a helicopter, maybe chasing flocks of geese. And you're welcome to think about it a little bit so we see who can solve it in the fewest number of equations. Right, anytime you cut through a member, you have an unknown. The directions aren't unknown because we know the direction of the members themselves, but we don't know the, I mean, the inclination is not unknown, the absolute direction. Yeah, the usual. Simple truss. All joints are uh, simple pins. Beautifully constructed, crafted, you might say. Is that good? Can you get by without doing the reactions? You could do 
the method of joints, work all the way into those points. But that's not what we're doing, we're doing method of sections. So let's give it a try. That's one of the ones we're looking for. 
there's BE, the other one we're looking for. And then the intermediate one's CE and CG. Is the height on that just L? Uh, no, the height on it's 2L. That's L and that's L. Okay, so Alan, did you catch that reaction? You missed one of the parts of the reaction, the sideways part. That's a, that, that reaction is a pin one. Is it solvable? How many unknowns? How many unknowns? all kinds of time trying to suss that out. So how many unknowns? Yes, to the non-responsive crowd. How many unknowns? Unknowns, Bill. Did you make that cut? Something like that? Yep. Yep. One, two, three, four unknowns. Maybe we have to solve for those two intermediate forces, but maybe we don't. We only asked for two, uh, but still, we have four unknowns. Anything, anything we could do? Well, one thing you can do is sum the moments about point C. Actually, we have six unknowns because we don't know the reactions. But we could find those just by doing an external uh, reaction solution and then bringing those in. In fact, they're pretty easy because the horizontal reaction is what? Zero. Because the other end is a roller. And so they must be equal and opposite, so each must be 2F. So uh, we got rid of those two non unknowns without uh, doing much work at all. Could we solve the moment about C? Yes or no? Well, let's ask, let's ask two questions. One, is it physically, is it, no, let's see, let's, is, it, is, it, is it legitimate physics to sum the moments about point C? I won't write this down in ink, I'll write it down in chalk. So I can erase it if I need to. Is it legitimate to even write that and say, suspect it could uh, be useful? Not, not saying can we actually use it. Is it math? Is it physically legitimate to do that? Of course, we can. We we need equilibrium everywhere, so it's legitimate to do that. Why would that be uh, a useful thing to do? So we we no longer care then about these two forces. We have just those two forces in the moment they cause. Is that sufficient to solve the problem? Because that's one equation, but there's still two unknowns. That's unknown and that's unknown. Is it sufficient to solve the problem? No, you can't solve a two unknown problem with one equation. So you need some other equation. If you sum the moments anywhere else, then one or both of those come into play. And so you've added back in an unknown. 
So what else? We've got four equations, I mean four unknowns. We can do this. We could do method of joints to get one of them and then use method of the seconds to get the other. There's nothing says that method of joints is off limits when you're using method of sections. We can apply method of joints if we need to. We can also change our cut and either come up with a different cut that is solvable fairly directly or come up with a different cut and use it as a set of independent equations. So what about this cut? Instead. So let's sketch out what that looks like. This is uh, this is option A, this is option two. So uh, making the same cut through the two members we need, but also now making a an intermediate cut here. All right, so what forces? 2F, 1F. The two that we need, DG and uh, BE, and these two forces. Got to be careful, they're not one force. Give them enough leeway there. And maybe try to guess some direction on these things. Or we'll use the same direction we had here. Four forces. Two unknowns. But again, we can sum the moments about point C. That takes those two forces out of there. We now have, well, is that independent from this one? If we sum this one about C, sum the moments about C, and we take a different section and sum its moments about C, are these independent equations? Wouldn't you get exactly the same equation? For you? So it's not going to help much. Well, what if instead of summing the moments about C, we sum them, say, about B? Because now <coughs> those two unknowns go through there, this unknown goes through there, we have one equation, one unknown, summing the moments about B, and then what can we do after that? Sum the moments somewhere else, maybe D, or just sum the forces in, in uh, the uh, horizontal direction and finish. So go ahead, finish it. Take a couple minutes. 
minutes. We've got some time here. You're not going anywhere. about V will be our first equation and then you can either sum the moments about D or sum the forces in the X direction which will probably be easier. In fact, uh, I think you could do that one by inspection. Right? appears to me that D, G, and B, E must be equal and opposite. They're the only horizontal ones on that section. So, remember, we can, we can combine sections if we need to. We can combine methods of sections and joints if we need to. What, you got it? You want the million dollars? Right. 
and that's the only other one of the problems. So you can solve for dg there. Obviously, dg equals f or minus f. So we got it backwards, and now uh, we got be backwards as well. Okay. Uh, I know on at least a couple of the homework problems, you're going to need to mix method of sections and method of joints that finish the whole problem. 